Cool. Good morning. Happy Black History Month. Um, I'll wear my manners. Uh, so, um, this is my first Creative Mornings. Uh, I've lived in San Francisco for about eight years now, uh, almost nine. And I always loved watching the videos. I loved the idea of Creative Mornings, but it was the mornings part that was a little <laughs> off. I was actually speaking with Anne, and it was like, if it was like Creative 11 AMs, <laughs> like, I'd be there every single time. So, I'm super grateful uh, to be here and share this space and time with all of you. Uh, and so, so today, I um, want to talk a little bit about um, investing and the term invest. And so when Mafe and Thomas uh, reached out and told me about the theme uh, and that they wanted me to speak this, uh, today, I was like, I'm not sure if I'm the right person. I'm not a CFA or I'm not Ben Bernanke. I don't know if I can really talk about, do I need to get a Series 7? I'm not sure if I'm qualified to really stand up here and, and creatively talk about investing. Uh, which led me to actually looking into the definition of the term invest. <coughs> Show of hands, or can anyone just blurt out, how many definitions do y'all think there are for the word invest in Webster's? Five. Five. Close. Four. There are 14. Four. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, the first of which is most likely the, the definition that all of us are most likely uh, associating that word with, which is associated to capital and uh, capitalism and more uh, specifically in finances. But that led me to dig a little deeper and find a definition that resonated with me and my story. And so I ended up arriving here. And the first definition that really connected with me was um, to involve or engage especially emotionally and to furnish with power or authority, as in to invest in an individual to a position, um, et cetera. And then I got to thinking why the very first definition in a Western uh, dictionary is correlated to finances, and why the first definition isn't, that we see in Webster's is not the one that's connected to emotionality. So that got me thinking a little bit more about my story um, what I've done in my career, uh, in my life, uh, and I want to share a little bit of that with you and some lessons that I learned along the way. And so, I'm, by using those definitions, I realize that I am uh, undoubtedly an investor. Um, I contribute to creating and identifying the position that I want to be in in the future and stepping into that position. And so, I tend to just be a, a tinkerer. I'm an individual that likes to um, be very curious in the world and, and try a, a bunch of different things. And I believe that um, today I, I want to share not only some lessons that I've learned along the way, but also how I believe that these can be some tidbits that can help other individuals potentially find fulfillment, enjoyment, or at the very least just have some sort of frame of reference that they can resort back to when you're trying to reach that exalted position that you see yourself in in the future. And so. My objective today is to communicate those things, and, and my promise is that uh, by the end of the next 20 minutes, uh, I'll make sure to share some of the techniques, uh, some advice, some insights that I've learned along the way in the form of, of eight different um, ideas. And so I'll be sharing some of these different ideas that may resonate with y'all. Uh, they may not, um, and that's fine. But uh, again, they're there as tools to resort back to if you find yourself along a path and they do pop into your psyche and you can use them. So I want to start at the beginning. My story began in a small town in Flemington, New Jersey. And most of you most likely have not heard of Flemington, New Jersey. It is a small rural town uh, wedged between New York uh, and Philadelphia on the western side of New Jersey. Nowhere near the turnpike or the shore. There's actually a lot of trees and cows in that part of New Jersey. It's a very homogenous area. And I only mention that because uh, this environment informed a lot of the colonialization of uh, my mind and thus my, my journey, which I'll, I'll speak to in a second. So give first. Um, I was born to two young parents, um, 19 and 20. Um, thankfully, uh, I had a great aunt and great uncle that were in my life at the, at the time as well. Uh, and, and they lived in our, in our hometown. And so I had a, a strong support network um, and a strong familial structure around me. 
Um, now, with the recognition that we don't choose our parents, our family, where we're born, the bodies that we're, we're incarnated in, uh, I'm extremely grateful uh, and thankful for this. Um, notably, um, uh, my great uncle was an individual that uh, was extremely selfless and uh, stepped into the role of, of the patriarch and, and helped um, uh, support myself when he didn't need to. And that was something that at a very young age um, I recognized and something that uh, instilled um, this understanding of what uh, selfless giving looks like. And so as I, I progressed in my adolescence, I leaned into being a bit more of a giver naturally. I wanted to try to show up and please other individuals. Does anyone connect with that idea of just being, okay, thank you. And so I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm still kind of unpacking where that started, if it was something internally in me or if it was my environment, meaning if I was naturally an individual that was interested in, in giving and pleasing, or if because I'm in a black body and I happen to grow up in a rather white area of New Jersey that I, I needed to prove my value consistently. And so uh, that was a, a lesson in um, understanding that there are different motives. And I understood this around middle school and early high school around, I'm really attached to giving but I, I recognized that I wasn't necessarily that happy or fulfilled. And, and all this is, you know, it's very young uh, in life in general. But still, there was this, this understanding that um, I'm kind of just going through motions and giving, and I'm not really um, uh, executing autonomy in this. Which led me to, to finally take ownership over my experience uh, and start to look a bit inward and give to myself first. Uh, and so around high school, I really started to, to take ownership over what that looked like and still having young parents I did all the nerve research for, for going to university and manage that entire process. And I, my family kind of understands this about me. I just kind of do these things and they, they just say, all right, that's Danny just doing what he's doing. Um, and, but that, that was the impetus of really starting to put myself first in my, uh, exercise my autonomy and my agency and t starting to understand that um, if, if I show up for myself first, then I'll be in a strong position to show up for others and I'll be able to, to achieve the things that I'm looking for. So next, show up. And so, uh, you know, continuing on the narrative of being a tinkerer, I really just wanted to get my hands dirty and try new things. And, and my aunt would categorize me as a, as a busybody. And so I was just around doing things. Um, I built a computer with some friends in middle school, had no idea what we were doing, but we just wanted to play video games. So we built a computer that allowed us to play video games. Um, getting into uh, later stages of college, I uh, wanted to explore entrepreneurship and design. And so uh, some friends and I, we really loved hip hop. Uh, we love fashion as well. Uh, and so we started a t-shirt line. And to promote that t-shirt line, we recorded a mixtape. <laughs> so if y'all are inclined, there's probably some raps on MySpace somewhere. <laughs> so. um, well, so, <laughs> um, but what that taught me was uh, that through these things that I was really passionate about and just diving in and starting to tinker, that um, I was in control of my own destiny. And like, the things that I was really passionate about, those were things that ended up uh, arriving in a place that I was happy and fulfilled. Um, you know, at, at worst, at best, they were successful. So um, also another lesson around showing up was that um, I, I got what I inspected and not what I expected. And so uh, earlier on in life, there were these um, goals that I was looking for, to try to achieve, but I wasn't necessarily uh, putting the right amount of attention towards them. And so like, they weren't really manifesting the way I, want, I wanted them to. And so making sure that I was focusing on um, inspecting these things and not just expecting them to happen was another lesson. Next, do your best. Uh, in College, I was an athlete. I played lacrosse. Uh, I went to Hofstra University and we uh, were a, a pretty well-known um, program. Uh, I had a teammate, his name's Nick Calalori. Uh, unfortunately, uh, he was in my life for about a year. Uh, I met Nick three times and he's undoubtedly changed the trajectory of my life uh, forever. He uh, was, between a year of his diagnosis and his passing, uh, he was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Uh, this man started a, a foundation um, for cancer research called Headstrong, uh, and, and our team um, really ra rallied around 
uh, him and his cause uh, and what he was going through. And the last day that I saw Nick, we went to his house in Ridley, Pennsylvania, and the team was gathered around him. He's very funny, very social, uh, and he was just holding court and just telling jokes for about an hour. And he was very sick. And the last words that he said to me were, stay black. <laughs> and I, like, I lost, I was cracking up. And everybody else was cracking up. And uh, when we got on the bus and we were on the way home, I really understood what he meant. And he meant just be yourself. And just don't identify with anything else and just be the person that you are. So the next day he passed. Uh, and we went, when we went to the funeral, the team, um, we went in first to the, the, um, the church. And uh, Nick was there in the casket in his uh, lacrosse warm-ups. And he was buried in his lacrosse warm-ups. Now, up until that point in my life, I had never taken anything that seriously. I had um, done well, uh, above average, um, just kind of putting in minimal effort. But that day and that experience and meeting Nick changed things for me forever uh, and was the, very, like, the impetus for sure um, for me to start thinking about um, reaching my fullest potential uh, and doing my best. And so this isn't a call to try to outdo the individuals that are around you or even outdo yourself, because I believe our best is variable and can change over time, day to day, whatever was going on in our environment, in our lives. But this is a call um, and a lesson that I've learned to try to resort back to to make sure that I'm showing up and focusing on quality as much as I can. Next, be open to receiving. So after having an understanding of uh, really what you know, shooting for my fullest potential looked like, I had no idea what I really wanted in life. I never really thought about uh, fully what were all the things that I was interested in uh, receiving. And so I, I did this exercise called uh, creating a want list. And even going through the process of uh, uh, creating this list was uncomfortable and brought up sensations that uh, I shouldn't be doing this or who am I to start writing down all these things that I want or that it's attached to um, uh, objects. Uh, and it's it's, it's a, a foundationally rooted in materialism. Um, but I, I realized that those are all um, more or less ideas that stem from scarcity. And I wanted to operate with the fullest abundance possible. Uh, and so I wanted to really have clarity around all the things that I wanted so that I could know and be open to receiving those things and being open to receiving support and help on my journey on the way to those things. And so uh, that led me to understanding that um, everything is possible. And that, so after understanding and creating this list of wants, I had things on there like, um, those are still true and we're here now, so uh, I want to go to space. Um, <laughs> um, but there are also things on that list like I wanted to run a marathon and I wanted to um, uh, communicate to my family that uh, I love them and that uh, I want to communicate the, the path that I've walked down and um, they're also back east and they don't get to, to see me that often, so I wanted to make sure that I communicate those things to them more often. And so, tangentially, uh, that led to me to start thinking about, okay, so is it really possible to achieve all these things? And by and large, uh, when I say everything is possible, um, it's, I'm being very intentional here and not saying anything is possible. Um, by saying everything is possible, I, I'm uh, speaking to the notion that all possibilities that exist in the future are here in the present moment right now. And so all of our thoughts that we're thinking about um, can actually be materialized in the future. And this connects to the, uh, the, first def or the second definition of invest as well. And so I wanted to be as, as, uh, as abundant as possible and starting to think as broadly about what were the things that I was interested in doing and achieving. And so one of those things, excuse me, one of those things was uh, actually launching um, a company in uh, 2016 called Level Therapy. And Level Therapy is a mobile platform that provides video access to licensed psychotherapists. And we also build our own software tools to manage anxiety and depression on your own. So we partner with employers, nonprofits, et cetera. 
And at the time, um, 2015, 2016, there weren't that many of these types of companies uh, in the space. And my co-founder and I had stumbled upon this opportunity from two different lenses. And so uh, myself uh, uh, on the uh, consumer side, so this is actually born out of a problem that I had. Uh, I was going through um, the shutting down my first company and uh, a, a tough breakup and wanted to speak to a therapist to kind of get back to baseline and realized that it's a very awful experience and it's full of friction um, consistently till today. And um, even more so for individuals that um, are on the fringes of society and are trying to find individuals that relate to their experiences. And so uh, I was very overwhelmed by uh, this opportunity, but also resorted back to all these lessons that I had learned and mentioned a bit, pre a bit earlier. And so we just dug in and, and started figuring out what were the steps that we needed to, to figure out to get to um, all subsequent steps um, with this idea in mind. And that allowed us to really just understand like in the midst of chaos, there are these disparate dots that do have connections and it's, it's our, it was our job to try to find these connections uh, and manifest the things that we're looking for in the future. So next, uh, I wanted to uh, really highlight the notion of speciality and, and the, the fact that you are all extremely special. It's one in 400 trillion uh, as the odds of an individual being uh, conceived and born. Those are extreme odds just to, to enter this world, let alone operating in this space, in this environment that's trying to uh, hinder our experience every single day. And so this is a call to really uh, resort back to, to be mindful of how unique and, and sacred each of these passing moments are, each of these conversations are that we have and we get to uh, contribute into. And being mindful that when we are investing in ourselves and we are investing in other individuals, that these things are sacred and we don't necessarily know how often they're gonna be there. Which led me to understanding about forgiveness. I mentioned a little bit earlier about um, uh, just a little bit about my upbringing uh, and, and my parents. And for a while, I harbored quite a bit of resentment um, towards them for not creating the environment that I thought I, I wanted when I was a child. And that was just weighing on me and it was just old kind of energy that I, I needed to, to let go. And it took a while for me to really understand that I believe all of us, especially um, a lot of our parents, uh, whether, uh, you know, whatever the experiences were that we had with them, in, in my case, um, that they were doing the best with the tools that they had in the environment that they, that they were in at the moment. And after I really understood that, things just melted away uh, and started to build on amazing relationships with, with my parents. But also, it was freeing and liberating, and forgiveness is liberating, uh, and allowed me to free up space uh, and energy to focus on uh, other things that I was uh, interested in at the time. Which brings me to uh, the last kind of idea that um, I thought about that, that's really um, connected with me uh, recently, but also after that, that moment, um, is love. And I, I really, um, when I say love, I'm speaking about the, the action of loving, uh, the exercise of loving, and, and showing um, individuals um, your dedication towards them, or, or a group, et cetera. And specifically, I, I really connect with the definitions around philia and agape. And so philia being uh, a kind of demonstrated love towards um, a smaller community, uh, a brotherly type of love, a sisterly type of love. Uh, and agape, the, the kind of uh, love and devotion for uh, humanity and humankind. And that's, that's informed a lot of how I think and try to show up in the world. Uh, specifically, some examples are, uh, I, I've, I've recently um, been working on a book and chose uh, the, the first chapter, turned the first chapter into um, a mixed media chat book <laughs> in effort to uh, explore identity uh, in America, and a lot of my uh, experience has been here in, in San Francisco and in Silicon Valley, uh, and so I'm correlating um, that identity um, because like, there, are, there are aspects that are very familiar here, there are other aspects that, that are not, um, but it's a conversation around what that looks like uh, and, and how to transmute 
uh, these particular uh, feelings that we have, where they, be, they revolve around joy, um, sadness, uh, love, uh, trauma, etc., into something that's positive that we can share in the world instead of harboring these feelings that end up being projected out, that ending up hurting other individuals or hurting ourselves. And, and so that's, that's something that is very important to me that uh, I want to give to um, all of you and anyone who's, who's interested in, uh, in sharing um, uh, and taking a look. And lastly, uh, with regards to Agape, I mentioned a little bit earlier, um, focusing on trying to address healthcare disparities. And so I, I've been thinking a lot about how to show up for um, the individuals that are currently not, or they're, they're operating in a system that's, that's not designed to show up for them. And so I'm currently working on um, addressing that with a, a primary care network um, called Spora Health that's uniquely designed for people of color in the United States to address healthcare disparities, uh, specifically Latinx, um, South Asian, East Asian Americans, and Black Americans. Uh, and these things are, are, are how I'm interested in showing up in the world and showing up and, and uh, communicating my love for uh, humanity and other individuals. Uh, but they've all been a culmination of uh, previous steps that I spoke about a bit earlier. And they've all uh, been rooted in how I attach the position that I, I see myself in in the future and just trying to put myself in that position immediately today so that I can be successful um, not just in reaching that, but because I know that those, uh, that potentiality already exists in the future. Um, so the only thing to do is just kind of dive in and start doing the work. Um, and sooner than later, you'll arrive at that position. And so um, in closing, I do want to express uh, extreme gratitude for, for all of you for, for being here today. Um, I know it's very early. Um, and I'm super thankful to all the volunteers and everyone who was involved in, in um, putting this event together, and, and mostly uh, y'all. So thank you so much for, for being here, and I'll answer some questions now. Huh?